Hello and uh, welcome back to the low percent tutorial. Um, I took a break uh, between the parts, um, a pretty decently substantially long one, um, because I started doing a grind for world record. Um, that grind is currently still going. Um, and yeah, I, I've gotten a lot better. There's been new strategies and I feel really confident about making this guide. I'm not really doing any more like il timing practice discovery i'm literally just been grinding runs so there's probably not going to be a ton of new discoveries from now until the end of the series but i'm going to talk about some pretty big ones um that just came up before the end of mantis claw um and then um the other thing i've decided is that for the uh purposes of the video i i really don't feel like discussing current patch um as much i know i know i'm, I'm really sorry to the like few people who are going to run current patch low percent um I, I did cover all the basics of the early routing changes uh if you have any questions about it just let me know in the discord but other than that it's pretty much just the same as any percent umu sucks ass and you can't do the lever skip um yeah and then i'm not doing the split notes or anything on the overlay and i'm not changing my split names uh they're a little messed up, obviously, because um, I've been doing streams, and so there's been split renames. But yeah, 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 I'm, I'm really rambling on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you some changes. Uh, so my Geo is 205 right now, which is a little higher than you would normally have at this point, but we're redoing Mantis Pogo, so I can talk about some things really quickly. Um, now, if this Mantis does a backup... Uh, uh, hold up. Let me actually just set the save state again. Wow. I didn't get first try. Feels bad. Okay. I'm going to set the save state. So, I have some soul. And basically, we're there's a way that if the first mantis doesn't back up, you can get some geo. The, the big one. You can get 12 geo. And so, that's pretty huge. So, make sure you mini hop. You full jump. And if they don't back up, you hit them. Pogo and do that. And then another thing I learned is that you need to be patient with the Mantis Pogo. Um, I messed it up because I'm quite frankly a little tired. did like a nine hour stream. So apologies if I make any mistakes. I'm probably going to try to keep the editing down. So that's the trick once again. And just remember to be patient. Um, you really want to see the Mantis go down and all the way back up before you hit, do your first Pogo. That's helped me a lot with consistency. And it's something I didn't really talk about in the first guide with the new Pogo. Um... So it really helps. And then the other thing is you want to be on the right side of them. Imagine you make a vertical line and you split the mantis in half. You want to be on the right side so they retreat left. Um, and then uh, this mantis that's right here, I like to turn around and fireball them. And it's really important later, but we're going to pick up their geo. Um, and then for this mantis, this is going to be early control I'm showing you. This setup works really well for me. Early control saves about like a second and a half to two seconds in this category, um, and you lose a health. So it's really good if you pick up the notch or if you had a really good fungal waste. Fungal waste is a really hard split. So you wait for them to come up here, and then you run into this corner, swing twice, and then pick up. And then you pogo them. I'm going to show off an inventory drop in something in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and show one last Mantis Pogo, and then we're going to focus mainly on early control and the movement after. So there, what happened was I pogoed way too early, and the Mantis got slapped down too far, and I didn't get any height. In that situation, I could have fireballed to air stall. Um, I'm just going to show the Mantis Pogo, even though I missed the lever. So, that's another example of Mantis Bogo. Uh, when they back up like that, you have to remember you can't kill them for the Geo. Because it takes too long. So, that is just really unlucky when that happens. Um, but... Um, oh yeah, if you do make it onto this ledge, you do need enough uh, soul to fireball a crossover. Like that. So, don't don't use all of your soul like I just did there. Uh, this is a pretty hard trick, so... Do you expect to fail it like I am? 
Although I'm normally not this bad anymore. Um, and you can just pogo crossover. And then I like the fireball. And then I'm going to set a save state for early control just to show it off again. So you're going to wait for the mantis. Once you see them clear that ledge, you're going to do that. So I'm going to break down all the steps. I messed it up, but uh, that's because I didn't actually hit the corner. So the first step, I I'm going to pause at each step. So right here, you're waiting for this mantis to get high enough. So that way they don't get caught in this corner. Once they get there, you're going to walk off and wait here until you see them right up here. And then you're going to hit this corner slash twice and turn. Um, pausing messed it up, but uh, it it's a lot more precise than uh, the uh, any percent one, but it works quite well. Uh, uh, when it does work. Uh, it's a little finicky. Uh, but I've been getting it pretty consistently on stream. Not really sure what's uh, messing up. That time, I went really, really far. Like, I waited for the Mantis for quite a long time, and I didn't make it to the corner. Uh, the important part is that you really do hit that corner. That's a better example, yeah. So I'm just not hitting the corner. Um, my bad. Uh, the corner is really deceptive, as you can see on the hitbox, so make sure you do hit the corner. And you'll get hit out. And then you want to poke them. Okay, so um, I'm going to kill off that mantis so I can show you um, some tech really quickly. So you've picked up claw, you've gotten hit. What you want to do is you want to jump off this wall and pogo, and the mantis will always be right there because they just barely slash at you, so they'll always be pogoable. Pogo them, and then once you get to this part, um, you can just kind of like weave your way down here. You can pick up some geo, kind of whatever, um, and you can just like wall cling that at the end. But I found the easiest way to get through this room is actually slide, and then the second you see yourself stop sliding, just open inventory, and you'll be fine. If you wait a little bit, you're obviously going to clip the ledge too early, you hit there. But if you actually, like, look at the animation, so I find it's a little easier with hitboxes off, um, you'll, you'll slip right through. Uh, it is a pretty tight window, as you can see, uh, but not too tight. There is some room for leniency. So, make sure that you like slipped underneath and once you let go of the wall you go um the next bit of tech with low percent uh this uh jump right here is a uh, 100 percent optional um but that jump right there saves some time um and it's re kind of soft required in some spots um basically how it works is when you wall jump off the side of a platform like so you'll notice you're getting a boost and that boost is faster than walking speed, and so when you do this, um, you do fall for a second without going anywhere, but the boost gives you more horizontal distance. So you're losing height in exchange for fast. Um, this is a really good spot to practice it, because the movement um, for this section involves this. It is pretty hard um, to get used to. Um, on keyboard, I find it's really important to not press jump too early. That's what I mess up doing a lot, is I press jump way too early. Um, on controller, the hardest part is getting the cleanest turnaround. But I find these easier on controller because the just layout like pseudo forces you to. Um, the timing is a lot different than like a turnaround fireball where you just kind of want to instantly press it. On this, you want to give it a second because it does take a couple frames for your character to hit the wall. Um, if you're slow, you'll end up having to do a wall jump at the end. Um, and then if you're not doing this trick, I would just do a jump and then wall jump is what I would do. Um, so I'm going to show all the movement again, actually from the very beginning, including the, the claw, like everything. So pogo, claw, kind of what this room looks like, because it is pretty advanced and then we'll move on. So I didn't go for the kill because they were in a bad spot. Turn around, fireball. The geo lines up pretty nicely on the edge. 
I wait for this mantis to clear. Wait to see them poke out. Hit the corner. And I do the chase swings. Uh, messed up the wall jump, but that's okay. Uh, messed up the inventory drop. And then you get that wall jump at the end. So mistakes there were I didn't get the cleanest wall jump at the start. And then I went too early on the inventory drop. But yeah, other than that, that's all the movement. You're going to go up here. And you're going to go up there. Uh, one thing to note is that wall jump, you can um, open your... In you can close the menu if you're fast. So that way you can actually see yourself do the slide jump. Because uh, you have the menu and you have the inventory on top as well. And it becomes really hard to see your character. So I'd either practice or you can close the menu um, by just like tapping jump. I think you have enough time to do it before the first big wall jump. But yeah, that's that. Uh, this room... Um, you can jump straight to here, just like that, but this balloon can be hugging this wall, and you'll jump into them and take a damage. Um, and if you've kept this uh, health through, um, you, you didn't take the charm notch, if, this bal if that balloon is in that position, you're going to get hit. So what I would do is you can either react fast enough by just jumping up here, pogo, or you can always land up here if you're on 1 HP, which is what I do. Um, and then if this guy's in the way, I just fireball them, because they're annoying. Um, movement in this room, um, there are some bugs if you pogo a mushroom. So I would recommend you just copy my movement. Um, if you wall jump while you're still going up from a mushroom, uh, your next wall jump is a full jump. And it doesn't get reset until you start falling. So it's a pretty big bug, as you can see. That wall jump was pretty high, even though I tipped the button, tapped the button. So you kind of want to do that. Um, I'll exp I'll break down the movement. Basically, you want to jump and you want to start falling for a bit. Pogo. You're going to do some wall jump, uh, a couple wall jumps, and you'll land right here. And then you're going to immediately do a mini hop, Pogo. And then you're going to move over, Pogo this, and you should land just barely on top of this. Uh, you want to be careful. You really want to make sure you land here because that Pogo bug will cause you to do a full jump off this if you go too high. So, I mean, if you go too low. So I'm going to show the movement chained. So as you see, I got that full wall jump and that lost me some time. And the reason I got that full wall jump was because I didn't space out my uh, jumps properly. So I didn't get enough height. Um, hold up. So something like that. Um, it's important to have a high enough mini hop. Now there are some turnaround swings. You can turn around swing on any mushroom in the game. Um, and, and there's actually one that you can do in the previous split that I, I didn't mention. Uh, you can figure it out if you want. Uh, the, as long as you're kind of not slow and you hit the mushroom and you hit it the right way, it's worth um, by a small margin. By no means are you obligated to go for these, and if you're not good at them, you're going to lose time. Uh, the beginner way I would recommend is you just jump into them, and sometimes they give you a boost, if you're lucky. Just like that. Uh, if you're unlucky, and you don't get a boost, then I don't know, just jump over it. Um, and then you can do it on this one as well, um, or you can jump into this one if you uh, buffer the jump, and... Actually, I don't think it's buffed for the jump. You just wait a split second, I'm pretty sure. But it's kind of hard. Like that. Okay, here, I like to do a corner wall jump because habits. But you can actually just jump and then you can make this. But I like to do the corner wall jump because it's a little um, easier. So corner wall jump, jump up, hit the lever. Uh, you can hit this guy for soul. Uh, it's really nice to have a lot of soul in this section. Uh, don't heal at this gate. You really don't need to. You can get through this entire section at 1 HP pretty easily. Um, if you need Geo, like, you need... You, you probably want around 200 at this point. If you're short, uh, this guy drops 5, so you can fireball them really quickly. So. If you're in a pinch... Um, if you're below... If you're below 190, I would just say cut the time losses. Don't kill enemies randomly. There's a good spider that drops 15 at the end of darkness that you can just kill. Um, and 
then the other option would be to just do the light tram pass route which uh gives you so much geo that like you, you could probably as long as you didn't miss a ton in the run you should be fine uh this room this mushroom is rng um they can it can bounce you left or right depending on like walking off this platform uh it's not like where you start on this platform. You can literally hold the direction and it's completely random. Uh, so you can go for it or you can not. Uh, I just find this um, mushroom balloon thingy tends to be in the way like 99% of the time. So I just go for it. Um, and then this one you can get with a mini hop if you like do it kind of at the edge. Like that. Um, you can also pogo. Uh, there's another bug where if you are mid pogo, just like the thing that gives you the wall jump. If you are mid pogo, you will end up uh, not getting a height. These mushrooms are clearly bugged, as you can see. Um, I'm literally standing on one, but as long as like your corners like align with it, like you won't bounce. So as you can see, the second I moved, I got a bounce. So they're very bugged. My my takeaway is that I like doing this. I mean, not that. I like doing. Holy cow. I like going for the RNG and then I do a mini hop right here and then I often get this bounce and then sometimes I don't and I just take the time loss. Um, okay, next section. Uh, for this room, there's two ways to go through it. There's a, the, the way that works every fuck, every time, every time it works. And then there's a way that sometimes doesn't work, but it's faster. So I'm going to show you the way that works every time because I don't care about the 0.3 second time save. So you just do this, you like walk off, you pogo, and then you pogo fireball. That simple. That's the easy way, you just walk off, and as long as you pogo, uh, the most important one that you need to pogo kind of on time is this one right here. If you wait too long, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, if by some means you get off cycle, you can like bounce into it intentionally. Um, only goes one way. But what I recommend you do is I just kind of, like, don't greet it or anything. I kind of do that. Where I, I stand on the edge of this, like, wait here. The, the hitbox on this is pretty, like, deceptive when you're further away because the... Um, object itself is foreground, but the hitbox is background. I mean, not background, midground. So, as you can see, the hitbox changes. And so it lines where you see it when you're on top of it is where it actually is, if that makes any sense. I, I know that's complicated, but basically what I'm saying is that once you get to it, the hitbox matches, but till then it doesn't. Um, and then if you do the other way, I'll show you the other way. Is you want to jump right around here and poke in the middle and bounce off that and then here's where the rng part comes in sometimes you'll get bounced by this little mushroom into the transition and you can fireball otherwise you just pogo uh pogo fireball like the other one uh the way to do this pogo fireball by the way is a nail cancel i haven't explained it in this tutorial because it's pretty basic but i'm going to explain it now just in case you don't know you can cancel the back half of your uh, nail swing with a fireball so if you fireball, um, I need some soul. If you fireball right as the um, hitbox goes away, like you press it, then you'll instantly fireball. Um, and you can cancel pogos with it as well. So the timing is the exact same. You don't want to, you don't really want to mash or you'll go higher than you need to. And you'll like. So that's the timing for this. Um, this room, um, this trigger right here, the middle is the drop trigger. And then it triggers once you hit the orange lines at the far left. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to hit the edge of this black mushroom that you see in the foreground. And then once you get to this little mushroom, you're just going to open inventory like this, just like that. So hit the edge. Uh, that was too far. You can do it like right here. So, um, I think the diagonal one works as well, but I'm not 100% sure. And then you're just going to open inventory 
when you get to that middle mushroom. And then hold right in inventory, like King's Pass. Uh, make sure not to hard fall. Um, and then you're going to go right. Um, the reason you don't want to hard fall is if you hard fall, you're going to get hit by the uh, dirt carvers um, sometimes. Uh, in a scenario where you're at 1 HP like I am and you hard fall, you're just going to pogo the dirt carver and you're going to hug that wall if you didn't instantly die. And um, sometimes they burrow back into the ground if you get high enough. Um, if they don't, you're just going to have to like pogo and hope they don't crawl after you. Hope you don't die. I'm here, I pogo, pogo, and into this transition. It, um, I'm gonna reload this room here in a second, but I wanna pause while I talk because these garpeeds are annoyingly fucking loud for zero reason. Um, you wanna pre-jump every transition here, practice that, um, and then for the areas in deepness, you went right in the first room, you go right in this room, you go left in the next room. Um, you wanna pre-jump every transition uh, because it saves a significant amount of time um, and then as long as you make the cycle, you won't get hit at all. These cycles are really easy to make, and the dirt carvers won't catch you, so. Pre-jump, pre-jump, inventory drop. Um, pre-jump, pre-jump, and then pre-jump into the transition. And then this room, pre-jump this one, this is not an inventory drop. Pre-jump, and then inventory drop in the middle. Um... And then this ground breaks, and I like the mini hop. The reason you inventory drop in the middle is because it funnels in, and you'll hit the ledge. Um, this room is important because it is on a timer. If you do the timer perfectly, you actually take damage at the end. Um, but if you do the timer, like, not perfectly, like, even just really good, or, or kind of good, um, you'll be fine. If you hard fall here... Um, you can still make the timer. The only way that you miss the timer for this room is if you don't pre-jump anything, you fall into this pit or something really bad happens. Uh, and in that case, you just need a damage tank. Uh, so you're going to jump up here. And then with all the breakable ground, you kind of want to give it a good medium hop. You don't want it to be a bunny hop, a medium one, to get fall speed. And you saw that um, garpede there. If that garpede, if you're fast enough, that Garpede will barely clip you on this corner and you'll take damage. So at 1 HP, just like wait a teensy second. Um, it's really hard to do. It requires good pre jumps on literally everything and a good inventory drop. I've only had it happen to me twice, once in a run. So, um, and then pre jump all these. Um, and then you can pogo this breakable egg right here and pogo this one too. And then inventory drop. And then. Um, make sure you cancel your inventory relatively early. The hard fall timing um, is pretty lenient here. So you're not going to see your character. You'll get a feel for it, but you really want to be moving right as soon as possible because you're just losing time if you're not. Uh, if you hard fall into the lake, it's only a bit of time loss, so it's not a big deal because I think the hard fall animation shorter. I don't even get to see it because my camera never follows me and debug camera breaks in this room. But yeah, you're going to take this bench, and that's Hot Springs. Um, and then you're going to jump once and keep going. Uh, you can soak in this um, pit for soul if you really need to. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for the split, but for the next split, it's pretty good. Um, so there's two routes from here. Um, I'm going to set a save state. And um, I'm going to show you the dark route first, because the dark route is like... Eight seconds faster. It's all my tame save on re world record in the very beginning. It's super, it's super good. It's fun. Like the dark rat's fun, and it, there's less RNG. I that that sounds crazy. There's less RNG. I will say there is a couple things bad about the dark rat. Well, one, you get less geo. So the geo I have is so good. This is like way more than you need. Just if as long as you have like 200 right here, you're chilling. 190 it's a little tight um you can get geo by killing the uh shroomal warriors right before shroomal ogres uh pretty easily nail fireball get eight geo you can get geo from mantis pogo so there's a lot of places you can pick it up or you can kill the husks that you're gonna see on the way here and they drop three to four geo but yeah the the dark route gets 20 less geo than light route so you're going to get Dirt Carver that's 25, and you get 15 more Geo in um, the uh, next split. And then at that point, you need 250. So if you're doing Dark Route, you get 
40 guaranteed geo. So at 200 geo, all the rest of it's coming from husks. Just so you're aware, you're, you're going to need to kill some husks. Um, and then for light route, uh, you get 20 more geo. So you get 60 geo. And so if you're at less than 190, all the rest is coming from husks. Just so you're aware. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show dark route first because it's so much faster and there's less RNG. Uh, the only really bad things that can happen is if you hit spikes, obviously you lose a lot of time. Uh, if you hit spikes a single time in any of the dark rooms, it's no longer worth. Um, and then if you, um, at the very end, the Carver Hatcher has a chance to fly really high. And if they fly really high, you just lose some time. In that scenario, it's still most likely faster than Light Route, but it's really annoying and can be hard to work with. Okay, so you're going to go left here, and you're going to kill this husk um, if they're in the way, because you cannot pogo the ceiling. If they're not, I like to side slash uh, pogo, and if they're very here, you can pogo. Uh, you could fireball them or do triple slashes. It's up to you. depends on your geo. They drop three. Um, and then uh, this horn husk, this ceiling, you can get over them pretty easily, which is the pogo. Uh, you can side slash them back into the tunnel to get over them, or you can like let them slide out, or you can kill them, kind of up to you. Um, and then this spider, you can hit and pogo those eggs. Now, there's a ceiling spider up here, and there's two husks. Um, you can fireball these two husks if they line up, and you can get geo your vs goes off screen quite a ways so uh you can kill both of them like this uh careful with the horn husks their hitbox doubles instantly the second they start charging and so it becomes really annoying to dodge them like doubles in length so that hit a husk off screen uh so you can get like seven geo this way pretty easily if they're decently far up there's a chance they're too far apart uh just be careful not to get hit by the spider so and then you can pogo this egg and you jump up here. Uh, keep moving. Uh, these are corpse crawlers. All, most of the husks in this section do turn into corpse crawlers. And they'll chase you pretty angrily. Uh, you do get quite a bit of geo from them, but um, it does take them a while to spawn, so I wouldn't recommend it for farming. Um, and I'm going to give myself lantern for this uh, section. Um, I'm going to do a run through with lantern, run through without lantern. Uh, first one is just to explain cues. So this room we're gonna do twice so it's kind of important you learn in the beginning you're gonna walk off one two three you, you, you hear that so you land on this ledge land on this ledge and on this third ledge you land it's pretty important because we don't want to walk into these spikes if you walk into spikes in a dark room you respawn at the beginning you can't walk into them uh you always just barely make the corner uh no matter how hard you try uh, you could side slash, I guess, if you wanted to stay really safe, but you're not going to run into them. Just don't jump into them like a dumb idiot. Um, so one, two, three, and you're on this long platform. And this platform, I see the ceiling, and I see this edge. And once you're right around this black web at this corner, you want a full jump. Or you can do a mini hop, either one. This geometry is really nice and actually curves your jump out. So even if you do a baby hop, uh, I just didn't hold right. If you do a baby hop versus a full jump, you'll still make it. If you do forget to jump here and you remember in time, you can pogo, slide on the wall, and land right here. Um, careful not to hold left into it or else you'll hit the spikes like that. So you can pogo, slide, or you can do the jump, either one. And you should see these spikes. Um, and then once you stop seeing the spikes, that's when you know you need to jump. Now, this jump is kind of lenient. Um, if you jump too early, you're going to dunk on those spikes and if you jump too late if you get coyote frames you're gonna hit the top spikes but it does require you getting coyote frames i um, mean if you don't jump at all you're gonna fall on the bottom um you could do like some weird shenanigans i don't know like you could do a jump pogo and maybe you'd be fine i don't really know i just do this full jump uh it's very rare that i jump too late and get enough coyote frames to actually hit the ceiling spikes and it's very rare that i jump too early and hit the bottom spikes if you do jump too early you can obviously like pogo but like you're gonna hit the top most likely so you'd have to do like pogo to the side and like weave back in okay in this section you don't want a full jump 
out of here because you're gonna hit that geometry right here you're gonna slip on it and you're gonna lose time so i always just do a jump pogo uh my game does lag when i have all the hitboxes on so just keep that in mind that i am slipping a little bit because of it um okay this spider i jump and hit the ceiling and i up slash uh the reason i hit this ceiling is so that way i don't jump into them by accident i'm really safe and comfy if i hit the ceiling and in most spots you'll hit them so i do an up slash when i jump into the ceiling and i get um a single hit uh in a pinch they can give you seven geo but i wouldn't go for it now for dark tram pass you're going up and you can land right here or here but i really like fireballing these husks they can be hard to get over in the dark so I like fireballing them. You can get quite a bit of Geo too. Um, if you don't fireball them, you have full soul for the Carver Hatcher, which is amazing. Uh, if you do fireball them, um, you're going to be a little short soul. You do need two fireballs leaving this room. Or, or at least five hits of soul. So keep that in mind. Uh, okay, this room is really fun. You're going to go left. One, two, three, one. And so those are the wall jumps I do. Um, you don't have to do any specific order. The The most important thing is that these spiders um, start on this left kind of corner wall, and then there's this spider that obviously guards this one. Uh, something to keep in mind is you don't want to jump into these spikes either. So This is the movement I find comfortable. If I miss a wall jump on this first part, I, I just inherently notice. So let's say I go early, so I just add a wall jump on the next wall in case I just mess up. Um, and then you want to land here. You could also like do weird shenanigans with pogoing, but that gets really freaking scary for no reason. So I just always land and then jump up. Um, and then this horn husk can charge you. So you want to do this jump pretty quickly. It is kind of tight. Uh, pretty easy to miss under stress, as you can see. So... You just want to make sure that you're full jumping into it and not holding into it. Full jump and then start holding and press. So make sure you're timing it. Um, it is pretty easy to jump into these ceiling spikes. So what I like to do is the second I get this jump, I like to move over pretty quickly. So that way I don't hit these ceiling spikes. Uh, that spider will never bother you, by the way. Don't worry about it. Um, and then fall and pogo. Um, you could alternatively like do some weird jump and like slide into it as well that would also be good uh, it's fine to do some baby strats here um, as long as you do them correctly because this does save quite a bit of time um, and then here I just like look at the ceiling once I see the ceiling like about to stop I jump up and um, pogo and uh, sometimes I hit the spider sometimes I don't if you need to farm soul you can farm it off the spider by just doing side slashes you do need three fireballs I wouldn't worry about HP. If you're at 1 HP, you're probably fine. I mean, not for 3 fireballs. You need 2 fireballs. Let me be clear. 2 fireballs. And 1 HP. That's it. So, um, And then once I see this grass end, uh, I jump up and jump off this wall. Um, I'm going to turn off hitboxes. So this dirt carver is the one you kill in the light route. Uh, if you jump, you're going to piss them off, and it makes dealing with this one a little harder. So don't do that. So make sure that you land as far on this corner as possible you don't want to be left you want to be right and the reason you want to be right is because this carver the second they aggro are going to want to run away from you the way that we keep them from running away when we fireball is to not have them in our range as you can see it's this circle and so sometimes you're going to jump into it if you jump into it, they'll dodge your fireball and you're in a bad spot. Uh, they take two fireballs and a nail swing or three fireballs to kill. Sometimes you'll double. As you can see, that one doubled or heard. Um, normally, you'll only have enough for two fireballs at this point. So uh, if they don't double, you just run up and quickly just slap them with the nail. Um, and then you're going to want to pick up the geo as much as possible. Be thorough about the corners. Don't greed this too much. Uh, it's really important to just get the fives and the fivers. Um, you can get up to 25 geo, um, and then you're going to really need this geo for, um, the, uh, distant village stag. So at this point, you can get up 
the maximum geo you can get without losing any more time um and having a really comfy darkness is like 15. um once we start looking at other geo there's a chance that some geo falls into spikes uh if you kill husks at the beginning of the next split uh you start running out of soul and you can't uh weenie your way out of darkness with our uh, fireballs so you just really want to uh make sure you have enough geo uh i feel comfortable at 238 is like the i feel comfortable because i really don't get less than 12 usually um and then here just pre-jump and then pre-jump and then hit this lever um i use like this uh these two poles is kind of my cue as you can see these black poles to hit the lever um and then this carver sometimes you can pogo three times and you can actually make it up here it's pretty rare though uh, i don't even think i do it in comsob because it's just so rare um, and then you can also pogo this carver with weird shenanigans up here, but it doesn't work very well. And then you're going to pre-jump and you're going to pick up train pass. Um, I'm going to show dark route without um, without any uh, lantern now. When you're practicing dark rooms, actually I'm going to give the dark room spiel on how to practice them at the end of the uh, dark rooms in dream now split. So I'll probably put a timestamp in the uh um video so if you just want more help with practicing um it'll be there so for here um i fireball if they're one way they're not so i do that um i got hit because they're just barely on the corner which is annoying uh getting hit there is pretty unlucky to be honest so i'm probably just gonna reset to try and show you a better one and be completely honest and turn off infinite hp and soul so I fireball there because they're just so in the way. And pogo. Pogo. Pogo those eggs. Pogo those husks. You can kill them if you need. Uh, I walked into the spit because I'm a dumb idiot, but don't do that. And then jump up to the left. I count one, two, three. Do you a jump at the end? Jump at the end. Jump pogo. Uh, there's the spider that you can hit. And then I jump up here and I fireball as I leave to hit these husks. And then I go up. And then I go up. And then on this wall I do some wall jumps. I did too many wall jumps. Let me try that again. Uh, let me show you what getting hit by spikes looks like. Wall jumps. Um, I got hit by that spider because they were already aggroed. And then jump up here. This jump's kind of hard swap side so you don't hit the uh, ceiling spikes up there and then um there's this spider right here and then i jump up um i have enough soul for two fireballs which is all i need jump on the corner one two i didn't double so i run up nail swing wait get all the five coins full jump mini hop Hit the lever at my Q. Upslash to get them out of their way. They can't hit you if you upslash them. And yeah, just keep upslashing. And then I grab Tram Pass here. And that's a Tram Pass split for Dark. I'm going to show Light Route. Okay. Uh, this is Light Route now. Light Route is um a really good beginner route um and in fact current world record does it uh until i have world record in which case it will be doing dark route um it loses eight seconds but um and is rng prone as well if you get bad rng you do have to do some extra jumps and shenanigans but you get a lot of geo and the carver is less likely to bully you the carver hatcher um it's personal preference but i find the dark rooms infinitely more fun and they're also just faster and the point is to be fast so uh, unless you're doing this casually in which case it kind of doesn't matter okay uh for this you can uh fireball if they're in the way uh just like in the dark route you jump up here um and then pogo over them in the ceiling you cannot pogo over them on the bottom ceiling uh because the hitbox is too small but on the ceiling you can um and then here you can jump up and pogo the spider and pogo the x um for soul um, you can fireball husks that you see 
any husks that you need to get some geo if you're really slow. Uh, really low would be like under 180 is like super low. Um, but you do need 190. So um, I would start fireballing husks if you're feeling that low. Uh, these two you can fireball with one fireball usually because it goes pretty far off screen. And then you can pogo that egg, jump up here, jump, jump. Okay, and then there's two husks and they hide in this grass. As you can see, there's one. You can get over them sometimes, but I just like to weenie and fireball both of them and I pick up all the GM. Uh, you do need three fireballs, ideally at the end of this. Uh, you can make do with two, but you really want three for this carver. And then you're going to jump up here. Oh, and then there's the spider. Um, and then you're trying to get to this wall. Uh, this jump is kind of hard to do, so I'd recommend you practice it. Um, because it can be pretty bad if you fall all the way to here, because you're going to hit those spikes most likely. Uh, you do respawn um, up here, because hazard respawn. Actually, no, you don't respawn up there. You, you respawn here. If you made it up to here, you would respawn up there. But... Um, that spider is really annoying and is going to hit you a lot and is one of the reasons I really disliked this route. And we're just going to jump up here. And then for this room, there's a husk. And then you're going to pogo the husk and try to dodge the spider. And then this husk in this tunnel, you can pogo over. And you can pogo this husk up to here. Um, that's optimal. Sometimes this husk is over here and you just have to jump. It's whatever. Um, and then for this section, you can pogo these, uh eggs to uh, do quicker wall jumps uh, cloth is over here and there's a bench you can't take the bench so don't do it and then in this this is a section you need two fireballs and a nail for or three fireballs you're going to be killing a carver hatcher you get 45 geo uh, so don't hold left hold newt uh, don't hold anything when you go in this transition i do jump fireball fireball and then if I didn't double, I jump fireball. Um, now, if you do, um, if you do double, then obviously you don't need to fireball again. Uh, pick up the geo. If I don't see a five coin on this platform, I always fall to the lower one, um, unless I already know I got enough. Uh, just to make sure that I get enough geo. Then you're gonna jump up here, um, and then you're gonna full jump. You jump and right at this pole i hit the lever um and then you can ride this carver uh, hatcher all the way up if you want um i mean not if you want if you get lucky uh for the rest of these i would just recommend up slash them uh they can't really hurt you so and then pre-jump and pick up tram pass and then after picking up tram pass you're gonna quit out Um, I did a dumb, so timer mod stuck on my screen. I forgot to remove it. Uh, after quit outs, it breaks for me, so. Oh, well, you're going to see the zero zero at the bottom. Um, hold up. I loaded the wrong save file. So, oops. My apologies. Um, I just wanted to reload it because I wasn't sure it fixed loading the save state actually fixed the HUD, but it did. Okay, so this is dark um, section, extreme. Uh, this is dream now. Uh, this is required dark rooms. Um, if you want a weenie, you can soak in this hot spring. What I'd recommend is you just kill all the husks for soul. Because uh, it is faster. So you can soak in this hot spring if you're really scared, but I would just kill the husks. Uh, you can go like one, two, three. Um, you're going to have to kill this one if they're in your way because you can't pogo over them. And you're not going to have sold a fireball. So they do turn into a carver hatcher. And then this one you can pogo over, do whatever, get a hit. Um, this is a really good last chance to get Geo. Uh, you're, you're only getting like 15 more after these husks. So. This is your last shot to get your 7 Geo. Uh, so you can like fireball if you desperately need it. But if you need to weenie, 
I would uh, just kill them. Uh, that being said, if you did Dark Route and you're like miserably short Geo, you can kill a spider at the end of Darkness to get an additional 15. Um, and you can just add spiders onto that to get more Geo. But getting a more than 15 requires lots of farming, so I would just avoid it. Okay, I'm going to set a save state and I'm going to show Dark Rooms with Lantern first. You might see some familiar rooms. Um, so for this room, I count one, two, three ledges because you hit this ledge, you hit this ledge, then you hit this ledge, or you jump into spikes. As long as you walk, you won't hit those spikes. You could side slash, I guess, if you're scared, but you won't hit them. And then on this ledge, I wait till I see the end, and then I do a full jump. Uh, the ceiling geometry saves you, so you can do a mini hop as well. But just hit the ceiling and you'll be fine. If you forget to jump, pogo, slide, let go as you're sliding. Don't hold left or you'll hit the spikes. I'm going to set infinite HP so I can hit spikes at will. So you're going to land right here, whether whichever way you did. And then once you hit this edge, I do a full jump. If you get coyote frames, like sport seal jump, you're going to hit the top spikes. So don't greed your jump like that. As long as you like jump while you're still on the platform, you'll be fine. And then don't jump too early or you're going to hit the bottom spikes. Uh, you could do like a jump pogo shenanigans, but it's whatever. Um, also, if you do an early jump and you know you can, you can like do something like that, I guess. But um, my advice would be to just get it right the first time and you want to worry. And then I jump pogo because there is ceiling geometry that you get stuck on. And then jump, hit the ceiling and like up slash the spider for soul uh make sure that you're hitting the ceiling and not jumping into the spider um and then i see this black web at the background and you're gonna go over here uh dark tram pass is going up dream nail you're going left so i use this dark web as a visual cue the ceiling's ending you can kind of see the ceiling ending as you get to it and like the eggs and that's like my jump pogo cue uh you can make it across with just the jump um pretty comfortably in the light but it's kind of scary to do in the dark so i just bogo um and i see this breakable object and that means i need to go up uh these eggs can spawn spiders as you can see so don't break the eggs um because you'll get hit uh and then if you forget to go up you're gonna run into this stuff out so don't do that either because uh, hp is kind of important um this room So I've discovered this recently. There's only a couple patterns to this room. You don't need to fireball the bottom row, the first row, but you can. It's on a cycle. So I always walk up and I do wall jumps. And if I see a spider like I do now, I pogo three times every time and I jump up and I up slash. I'll explain everything here in a second. I just want to show it. And then if I don't see that spider, Let's say I don't see that spider. Um, we'll see if I get RG where I don't see them. Okay, I don't see them. I wait a second and then I pogo. Um, and that will cover all possible patterns. Now, let me explain. Um, kind of the, uh, the um, I guess, uh, what's going on in the room. I was I was lost for words. Um, so you can also just fireball these guys like I'm going to do right now um, for safety. Okay, right at the end of the first room, there's these two um, rectangles. Uh, those rectangles represent the spawn points for these spiders that you're going to see in the circles. I'm going to spawn them now. As you can see, they do have an RNG delay and they have an aggro range. Uh, this aggro range isn't represented on hitbox, but they have to see you. So, what you can do is you can just fireball, and what will happen is if you fireball, you can just walk on the bottom, and you can walk underneath these uh, trigger hitboxes, because they, they, they don't extend high enough. And you can just jump straight up, and once you hit this wall jump, that's when they'll spawn. Very good beginner strap. Um, but if you're doing these three pogos, as long as you make it here kind of fast and you don't get caught in this corner, uh, you can up slash, and this spider will be knocked away from you and won't hit you. Now, at this corner, at this edge, I always fireball. This fireball will hit that spider that just died, no matter where they are. And you really want to do that, because right now you're being chased by a big angry spider. 
that wants to hit you. And if you fall into this spike pit, you lose your run. And if you fall off here, you lose your run. So, fireball here, and that big angry spider will knock you into the pit. Now, there's three ways to get across, and I'm only going to show you the good one, okay? If you see anyone do anything else, you could probably do that. But this is just objectively the best way. You see this top wall? You're going to jump off the top wall, full jump, full jump. That's all you're going to do. I, I Don't do anything else, you're going to fall. Uh, like, you can do this jump, and then you can also do uh, that, which Hemophody does. And you can make it all the way across. So. Which is what I used to do, because I was a dumb idiot. And then I looked at the hitboxes and realized you could just do this. Uh, it loses, like, literally no time. Like, the fireball is shorter, and the other two methods also have two wall jumps. This one just literally only has one. So this is not only just the fastest method, but, like, it's also the best. So it doesn't matter how high you jump up here. Two full jumps. And this geometry will seal and correct you. So once you see this edge, you're being chased by big angry spider. Full jump, full jump, full jump. And the second I land, I fireball. This spider drops 15 geo. Some of it can land in these spikes. From here on, in the run, or in this room, the floor is going to start breaking. If you get hit by spikes after the floor starts breaking, you're going to have to get through. So I'm going to show you, for example. See, I could land on there when I was first going, but if I try to get through here now, like I normally do, I'd fall into this pit of spikes and die. So, the moral of the story is, you either do this the first try, or you reset. If you're doing a no reset, you're gonna have to, like, just struggle, I guess. You can't make it across, obviously, but the movement I do, I... I weenie, like you can use these background objects, but basically if I see spikes, the second I see spikes, I jump pogo because I'm a weenie and then I'd fall into that pit and die if I had already gone through this room previously because I'm a weenie. So uh, going through this room sucks. I'm going to get a drink because I've been talking for a second. So don't do that. Um, once you get here and the ground breaks, the ground will break in front of you. There's like a spider. You're being chased. Go up. Um, you can fireball this spider, or you can just keep going. Kind of up to you. Or you can get hit by them. It really doesn't matter. Uh, just as long as you don't die, obviously. Um, okay. When I see this breakable object, I know that means the floor breaks. So I just always jump, and I kind of pogo just in case I am a dumb idiot. Uh, that spider spawns there as well. You don't have to worry about any of these spiders that you see spawning when you go through in the dark. Because as long as you hold a direction, you outrun them. Okay, and then the ceiling kind of narrows. And once I see the ceiling narrow, I know it's time to pogo. Um, now, I'm going to show you something that can happen. Is you can pogo. And this spider can knock you. If you're sp if Once you pogo these spikes and you land here, if the spider hits you, immediately pogo and try to land on this platform because otherwise you're going to hit these spikes and if you hit these spikes this is the end of the room by the way so if you hit these spikes at the end of the room you have to go through the entire thing again with all the floor broken you lose like a minute you're sad you probably have no hp you saw those big spiders that i killed they're just angry running around looking for you it's just a big mess don't do it just pogo like be aware this spider hits you because they can go all the way here until this floor breaks, in which case they can die. So don't fall on this floor either. This is pretty narrow. So remember, at this final section, you see the ceiling get low. You pogo these spikes. If you get hit by the spider, you immediately pogo back on. Don't fall. Um, the hazard respawns don't work in the dark. So, um, And then you're going to jump up here and you're home free. Uh, that spider spawns. You could kill him if you really wanted, but I don't. Uh, here, there is a backup spider you can kill. Uh, if you really are short you for whatever reason, you can kill this one as well. But, I don't. What I do is I see this single, like, black egg. And I know that means I need to jump soon. And then I see this back, bra uh, this spider background object, and that means it's time to go out. Um, this is the, uh, breakable, uh, floor. 
for uh, the uh, if you fall the pity route out of the Distant Village. So um, I'm not going to show how to do the backup for that, but there you go. Um, and then once you go up to here, I do a full wall jump, jump up here, and then I pre-jump and fall. This floor breaks, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you dunk in these spikes, just remember that when you hit go here that you're gonna fall into these spikes so you can either hold all the way right to the corner and then jump pogo or you can uh just pogo like that um because dunking in this room isn't as bad as dunking in the big room i don't reset if i dunk in the big room i'd reset no i do reset if i dunk in the big room i don't reset here ah that was confusing and then for here i jump pogo and then I wait till I see the spider shoot, and then I jump and try to poke them. Sometimes they damage thing. Now, this is the spider that you kill if you're short Geo. This is the good one to kill. Sometimes. So if you see that square hitbox, that's their spawn box. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't work very well. And so sometimes you need to enter it twice. Or you can stay in there longer. But yep, you just fall, jump up, and then you kill them. And then... I land here, and then I pogo. I time my pogo, um, but you can also baby strat this and jump off the side and do that. Because this is the room you do at any percent where you're like C dashing off this wall. And so you might remember that movement and you would pogo like that. Um, and then this floor doesn't matter if it breaks because you go fast enough. And then there's one final floor that breaks. I just randomly jump and pogo the floor to avoid it. So I... I see this background like doorway kind of thing the second one and I just know I just need to jump pogo I don't like the floor breaking you can pogo it through the floor but it's up to you and then once you do that that's all the dark rooms in the entire room uh, route you're done you've done it uh, the hardest dark rooms pretty scary uh, for new runners but they're actually not that bad so I'm gonna go ahead and load the save state for tram pass really quickly because I use other save states um, and then I will be right back. So let's see. So pick up tram pass, and then you quit out. Right. And now you're here. Um, you can soak soul, but I wouldn't do it. Um, and then you can kill this husk with three hits. Can't do it with the fireball since you don't have a pogo. Uh, great spot to get from Geo from these husks, but uh, the soul is nice, so I wouldn't. Uh, if you need soul for baby strats, I would farm it off them. Um, and then you go here. I count one, two, three, get to the end. Jump, 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 pogo. Jump, hit the ceiling, and then I up slash. I did it really early, but it's whatever. I see this black web, which means I know I need to jump. You can also see the ceiling kind of gets low. Um, and then I see this object go up. Don't break these eggs. Oh, yeah. And then here's another thing. When I see the camera move, I jump. Um, so I see the camera move and I jump. And that's how I do this jump. Forgot to mention that. But hey, now you know. Okay, for this room, there's the two cycles. I see a spider, so I pogo it all three times. Jump, up slash, fireball. I got hit, which is annoying, but it's not a big deal. Full jumps, once I jump off that wall, land, fireball. Um, and then I kind of jump because I can see the spikes pretty far away. And then I'm just looking for that spider, just jump pogoing randomly. I know that those spikes are coming, so I pogo them. If this spider were to hit me, I'd immediately pogo. Uh, you can pogo the spikes through the floor, so you'd be fine. And then I go into this room. If I need 15 Geo, I'm killing the one at the end. I jump once I see this egg past me, so jump up to here. Jump, pre-jump. I missed my pre-jump, it's okay. Jump, pogo. I saw the spider, so I know it's safe to pogo him. If I need soul, I'm killing the spider. Um, I was a little late on jumping back up. That's why you want to kind of 
you want to fall immediately jump back up and then you can pick up all the geo and then this floor breaks and i hold left and pogo and jump uh you can also uh jump off the left wall here just like that and then this floor breaks so i pogo it that's dark rims um final words of advice for practicing dark rooms do reps of lantern no lantern and make sure that you understand where the floor is breaking look for visual cues look for audio cues sing a song mit battery does that uh you can practice with hitboxes on so i know hey the floor breaks here and then i know where enemies are and but i don't see anything um, and then last but not least, uh, you can turn the brightness of your screen up and contrast and gamma and all that crap. Um, you are allowed to do it. Would I recommend it? No. Does it look good? No. Um, would I use a hotkey to change it in-game? I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. You would have to keep it the entire game. And does it kill the purpose of doing dark rooms? Kinda. This is the Descent Village jump. There you go. There's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, one is you could get coyote frames, which I did not get coyote frames. You could get coyote frames and then wall jump off. Don't do that one. The uh, main one you want to do is you want to do the wall jump tech right there. Uh, I talked about it before. You want to space your wall jump out. Okay. I just space it just like that perfect um the final one is you can fireball skip you could literally just do that if you wanted to just fireball in midair and you'd be fine um you can also turn around and it makes it even easier but the hardest part about this is having a fireball here because um if you fire need you would need soul here and uh weaning out and killing all the spiders in uh, darkness makes darkness easier so it's kind of up to you uh, if you fall here you can't get back up um the dark rooms are basically impossible to do going up um it's just really insanely hard there's devouts there's all sorts of bullshit down there um and then you would have to quit out and then go through all the rooms with all the floor broken so uh just don't mess this jump up just do that it's not that hard um on good paces i still weenie and fireball skip uh it loses like half a second so don't don't feel afraid to because obviously it's pretty easy to mess this up i find it easier to mess up on keyboard to be honest as i've said because the timing because i frame greed my jump press too soon and i do it at the same time as i turn and it doesn't go off because input handling memes, but uh, wall jumps don't buffer, so uh, only normal jumps buffer. As you can see, normal jumps buffer, but wall jumps don't. Okay, uh, for the rest of the distant village climb, um, I like to wall jump off these sides. Those two, uh, you don't have to, you can just fully land on the platforms. This jump is easy to mess up. Please practice it. Don't mess it up. If you do mess it up, you can like hold left and you can land here. And then like you can do a full jump and like make it over here. You can like fall down, land there. So yeah, if you know you've messed it up, just you can hold left. Um, I oftentimes forget and I hold right. And I land here. Um, but you cannot scale this wall really, so I wouldn't try it. So just like that, and then you're going to walk into here. Now, um, Instabell is a glitch that exists. Um, by looking down, you can get Instabell. You can get fast bell by just really fastly turning around like I'm doing. Um, if you're at 1 HP, you have to do the really fast turning. Um, just make sure you do some form of the glitch. It saves three seconds, so... This, if you're at 1 HP, works really well. Otherwise, you would look down, down, and then down as the handle goes down, you can get it fast. 
Stags in this category are two up, three down. That's what I remember. Um, you could write them in your split notes if you want. Um, for here, you need to not bench. So don't bench. Benches are bad. Uh, even if you're at one HP, you shouldn't be getting hit. So that's the movement I do. Uh, you can play it a little safer on the tick tick cycle. Or you can pogo. Either one, so kind of up to you. Um, yep. Uh, you shouldn't be getting hit by these guys. If you get hit by these guys, you're doing something pretty special, in my opinion. Um, so don't do special things, just hold right. Um, and then hold right, and then you want to land on this platform. I'm gonna kill the Aspen mothers. I mean, Aspen hunters, I can show you. If you just hold right and you land on this one, you hard fall. Um, and so you want to land on this one, and then this middle one, and then you could inventory drop, but I think it's not faster from timing. I could be wrong, obviously, so feel free to time anything that I say about, like, speed when it comes to that, but I believe that inventory drop is not faster. And then you're gonna take the tram, um, make sure not to bench, um, just hold right, uh, I would use D-pad for this section. Uh, if you're on controller, that's what I used to do. I uh, don't use analog stick, it's pretty easy to fuck up. And then make sure you're all the way in the doorway. Because the interaction starts here. So, don't greet it too much. Um, and then, yeah. You've made it all the way to... Uh, the safe spot, um... Hold right, get a drink of water, which is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, it's fine to jump and bunny hop and do whatever in this room. Just don't do it in the next room. In this room, there's a seam right here. If you jump off the seam, you get air walk. And you're going to soft lock. If you interact with this thingy by doing a high jump... And interacting with it the second you can, you're gonna soft lock. So you're not gonna do anything weird in this room. You're literally just gonna jump once, you know, walk up to it, and then you're gonna hit up. Don't do stupid stuff, and you won't soft lock. Uh, Rhino has lost many a run to soft locking here. I've never personally soft locked here in more percent, only in any percent, because like I would do dashes and be dumb. Okay, this is Dream Plots coming up. Dream Plots is pretty chill. Because uh, I don't do the dumb strat. Uh, you can walk off and fall off. It's the exact same time. RTA. I mean, not RTA. Exact same time in-game. Uh, you just lose a second RTA, but I'd rather do it than not. Okay. So, in any percent, the seer flies off. You jump dash. You hit this platform. If you get Dream Dash, you corner correct onto it. Otherwise, you just wall jump off of it. Um, in low percent, you can stand on this very edge and you can jump into that second platform. And if you get corner corrected, you're fine. You can also wall jump off of it. Uh, I don't do either of those because I don't want to lose my run to dream plats. So what I do is I just wait to see it fall off and then I jump on these platforms. Uh, you can jump a little earlier than I did. The timing's off. I'm going to respawn this here by falling off and trying to show you the other strats. Um, that I don't go for. Because it, they are kind of hard to go for. So, yeah, that was kind of it. But a little later. You need to be corner corrected onto the platform. Or else it doesn't work. Um, you could wall jump off that. But getting a wall jump off that platform is really freaking tight. And that's why no one goes for these strats. So, just do what I do. You can full jump from that third. I mean, not from the third pillar. You can full jump from the fourth. No, it is the third pillar. I'm just dumb. You can, like, do a big jump from the third pillar, and it'll line up perfectly, um, which is kind of what I do. So I do a, like, half third jump kind of thingy. Um, you can also do it from the second pillar and do a smaller one. Um, and then for the rest of Dream Plots, you're just holding right and jumping. Um, I'm going to show you which platforms I skip and which ones I don't. Um, but feel free to do any combination that doesn't involve you. Um, letting go of your right button. 
Because once you let go right, you lose time. And then you're going to talk to this here. You're going to pick up Dream now. And then you're going to quit out after you see the text. After you mash through the text, you're going to mash escape and quit out. Um, instead of doing seer skip. And as long as you didn't bench like I told you to not bench, uh, you'll be fine. So, um, if you hear this here, you quit out pretty late. Um, but you want... You've got a pretty big window to quit out, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Yep, you should spawn on this bench. And instead of going left like you did the previous two splits, you're going to go right. Um, and we're going to use the tram pass to get to city. Uh, this room has two damage tanks. Um, you can get turnaround slashes from the knockback, but I wouldn't go for it. Just do what I do. I'm not going to talk because the garpedes are just dumb loud, so... As you heard, it's silly dumb loud. So take two damage, don't do anything else, just bench here. Uh, this bench is faster than doing a damage list. If you're doing hit list low percent, you would just go over the top and you'd find a cycle, but obviously no one's gonna be doing that. This category is kind of hard to do hit list. And then this split coming up after you bench is really freaking hard. So grind it, okay. Uh, any hits you take after the first are time loss, so. Or, or pretty significant, so. Uh, for here, you're gonna jump, wall jump off here. Um, I do a wall jump here, wall jump, wall jump. Pogo the husk once. If the horned husk is right here, they turn, face the other direction, you pogo them, they turn around, and you get a second pogo. And you have a total of a full hit, and that's really good. Okay, for this section, you're being chased by wing sentries. If you get hit or Duncan spikes, you're really fucked, so don't do that. So just do your best to kind of dodge them, upslash them if they get too close. Uh, make sure you keep moving, don't hit the spikes. And that's the basic movement. Now I am going to show you some movement you shouldn't do, but could do, if you're good. Um, really great way to throw a run. Uh, but it's 100% consistent and it's faster if you're good at it. Uh, which is under plating. I am not 100% consistent and good at it, so I don't go for it. So you might see some failed attempts. Okay, I failed on the last one. Uh, the trick to this is you want to pogo really close to the spikes, so that way your pogo comes off cooldown before the ceiling bonks you into the spikes again. So as you saw when I dunked, it was because I pogo too early. So you see there, that's a successful attempt. Don't do this. Don't do this. Uh, your hazard respawn only updates on this blue spot. And so if you dunk at the end right here, you're just fucked. So. Um, and then all the sentries like group up on you and you don't have enough iframes to get out and you just die and lose your run. So that's fun. Uh, so yeah, do the first method. Second one's like if you hate yourself. Okay, coming up is Waterways Climb. This is really fun to IL. Um, I'm only going to show you the optimal one. Just kidding. No, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the uh, right side as well, which is pretty beginner friendly. So I'm going to set a save there. Um, okay, you're going to jump up here. And then you're going to wall jump. Uh, you can also jump up here and wall jump from there. But uh, obviously saving a jump is pretty important. Uh, don't full jump like I did, like an idiot. Um, just You don't really want to hold right into this, in my opinion. Because uh, it makes the jumps line up really weird for me. So I like not holding right. Because you hit those top spikes. And so I just really like um, kind of wiggling for a second and then going. And then you end up like that. You could land here. Kind of doesn't matter. Just make sure you're jumping kind of really high off the corner, otherwise you're going to have to do a wall jump right there. So kind of like that. 
Um, and then when you're doing left side, you're going to pogo these spikes. If you're doing right side, you're going to obviously go up to the right. Not there. I'm a dumb idiot. I haven't done right side in a while. You're going to go up there like that for right side. And then for left side, you're going to pogo and go up here. For left side, uh, do four pogos like that. And then you can wall jump up there and it all lines up. You can do this with three pogos. But it's dumb, silly, stupid, hard, and not RTA viable. So, I'm gonna try showing it a couple of times. But it's dumb, silly, stupid, hard, not RTA viable. So, I don't know what I'm gonna give up here. Probably in like a second or two. Yeah, dumb, silly, stupid, not RTA viable. Just do that. Four wall jumps. And me four pogos, one wall jump, like that. Uh, once you jump off this side, you go up here. Oh, I'm dumb, silly, stupid. And then you go here. And then you can pogo this guy. Like that. If they're really far away, um, you could fireball skip. Like, if they're dead, I'm going to kill them. You can fireball skip. Like that. Uh, this fireball skip's a little tight. Uh, if you're really bad or if you're on controller. Uh, you might end up getting a wall jump at the very end. Kind of like that. So just be prepared. Um, and then um, I'm going to reload that save state so I can show a different husk position. Hopefully I get the different husk position. Yeah, I did. Okay, so you can wait for them to swing and pogo them across. Or you can fireball skip, which is faster, obviously. The fireball skip is um you don't have to wait you do have the half second loss though um but the advantage of pogoing is you get to have soul um okay i'm gonna show you right side right side's honestly not that much easier but nah i know how mopa did it and some people might like it so you're gonna jump up to here jump up these platforms you're gonna jump up this wall pretty high like right here wall jump and pogo that guy as you fall wall jump up here pretty high and i messed it up because i'm mad but the goal is you want that rava that you pogoed to line up in the right spot to be pogoed across so kind of like right here that's too early but as long as i get up here fast enough they'll be in a good spot the important part is getting from this spot up to here so that way they get trapped on this wall and slide up and then you can poke them across otherwise you just fireball skip okay oh, that's waterways climb uh jump straight up here and now you're gonna pogo these guys uh there's breakable objects in the background as you can see so you can use that to help you but otherwise i would just go pogo try not to get hit um in this room uh, there's so the husk with like the little pat thingy always swipes at you and then this husk runs in a random direction um, and so when they're bunched together like this they can split up on you and it makes it kind of hard or they can group together um, it's kind of up to you whether you want to pogo or do whatever here uh, but sometimes fireballing is nice so here's your only non time loss heal is on this elevator um, you get two more heals that don't cost a lot of time. Uh, but you do have to dream now watchers if you use them. So, uh, the spire pogo is pretty simple. I know a lot of people like using dash to get up here. The, the thing I'm going to note about spire pogo is that the right object has a smaller hitbox. Uh, as you can see, very slightly smaller. Uh, it doesn't matter if you full jump, you're still going to hit it. So... Just know it does have a slightly smaller hitbox. Pretty useless, but oh well. Okay, I'm going to set a safe state because lever skip is kind of hard. Um, lever skip practice. I'm going to show you the best way to do it uh, in terms of RTA viability. Uh, you could bum rush this a little faster and maybe it works, but uh, RTA wise, or like just when you're in an actual run, uh, you're more likely to not make it and it's going to suck. So I'm going to show it to you. Pogo this. And then kind of wall jump here a few times. Do 
the wolf full wall jumps. And then once you get to here, I up slash once I'm in here. Um, I wasn't all the way in there. I'm gonna kill the guy because he's in there. Up slash. I'm not jumping. What the hell? Uh, you need to. Oh yeah, you need to delay your jump after your up slash because your up slash does eat the jump. And then you can hear yourself kind of grab this wall. If you grab the wall, um, the timing doesn't matter. But if you grab the wall, just know you did. So up slash. Uh, I did it again. Up slash. Wait, one, two, and then after the second one, once the second one stopped, I do a full jump. I hear myself land, and once I hear myself land, I do another full jump. Um, obviously, it's a little messed up because I paused, but I'm going to try to show it in succession. Oh, wait. If you get that really high nail slash, then just add another nail slash because it means you went way high on your jump. I'm going to show you the hitboxes again to show you what I'm talking about. So. That's what you're trying to do. And so the nail slashes just help you with the timing. Uh, if you fuck up, just walk all the way over to the right wall. And like side slash to make sure you're on it. And then wall jump and go up. Uh, if you fall down, the backup for falling down is once you get up there, you're going to slash twice. And you'll be fine. Even if you miss your slash, you'll be fine as well. So if you do it like right here, all right. But yeah, that's the timing for this. Um, I'm going to show you lever skip again and backups. Because uh, this trick's pretty hard to do and it can lose you a lot of time if you mess up. Um, one of the harder parts of the run. So wait here until they decide to attack. And then pogo up. If they go in there, then you're kind of in a bit of a pickle. Um, also, don't go up the right side like I did. I'm silly dumb. Uh, hold up. I dropped my water bottle. Oops. Okay. We recovered it. Go up the left side. So you aggro the flying Rava early. Uh, this works. And then you want to wait until you see them kind of get uncomfortably close and hit the lever. Uh, if they go really aggro on you, you're going to have some issues, and that's why you need to practice. Because the skip can go very wrong. I'm going to show you the backup if they don't line up, because you do need to pogo them across. You cannot jump that gap. Uh, you can fireball skip it if you need to, I guess, but it's kind of slow. So just like that. So I saw my slash was in the ceiling, so I knew I needed to add another one because I jumped too high. But otherwise, you'd be fine. Okay, I'm going to show you the fireball skips and what can happen. Um, sometimes the sentries get stuck fleeing right. So imagine I kill them because they got... Um, I'll show you where they can get stuck. So they can get stuck um, right here, and you can be stuck pogoing them forever. So if that happens, on um, this notch, slightly above this notch, you want to full jump fireball. So I'm going to show you. So slightly above the notch, full jump fireball. And you can do it with one fireball. Um, in a pinch, you can do it with two. So yeah, above this notch um, and below this top one that's kind of concealed so right in that middle spot is like perfect uh the important part is you don't want to bonk the ceiling um and then you can do it two or three but obviously uh one is better uh, assuming that you can actually turn around and aren't bad at the video game like i am so something like this uh i did make it across but i'm bad i made it across again but i'm bad That's better. Okay. And then you would just do the up slash. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I messed up. But, oh, well. Uh, for this guy, 
I up slash up slash and then I do a third up slash if I need to heal on this elevator and need soul. You can heal on this one and on the next one and then fireball to break the chandelier. But the issues you're going to need to dream Watchers. watchers. Uh, this wall is kind of hard to break sometimes. I just wait till I turn and the second I turn I fireball. Sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, you just uh, jump swing like that a few times. It sucks. Um, but yeah, and then you're going to break the chandelier for the uh, watcher split. Um, that's going to be it for uh, today's tutorial. Um, I've decided once again that I am not going to finish covering current patch. So um, if you have current patch specific questions, you can ask me and I'd probably be able to answer them. Current patch has a lot of uh, neat things like being able to dodge all the spiders in darkness a little easier. But yeah. Uh, thank you all for uh, stopping by, and uh, hopefully you have a good one, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.